The Super Mario Bros. movie was absolutely amazing and definitely did not disappoint. But there were some things in there that, you know, kind of rubbed me the wrong way and didn't really, you know, didn't make it like the best thing it could be. So in today's video, we're gonna go over five wins and five fails of what the Mario Bros. movie did well and, you know, some things that, you know, it slipped up on. With our first win, let's talk about the attention and detail and all the Easter eggs. Man, I can definitely tell Miyamoto had his hands all over this puppy because Man, the little Easter eggs, whether it be them going into the sewer and going into level one, two, and then, you know, the music coming on and the, you know, the pizzeria with like the little Mac pictures on the walls and, it, you know, or the Charles Martinet cameo, I thought that was pretty neat showing like a, a classic old Mario. And then also in the Mushroom Kingdom with like the paintings inside the walls of the, of Peach's Castle and the cool, cool mountain penguins being, you know, having their own like, you know, kingdom. And then, you know, I thought everything about the Easter eggs and the attention to detail was just like so perfect in this. And you, you had, you know, Toast Arena and the crazy cap showing, you know, Mario Odyssey's a little bit, you know, involved here. The scene where Mario and Luigi are running to their like first call for like work or whatever was just so awesome seeing them like platform over things. And then at the end, it's like the, it's the, the, the flag pull. I thought that was so creative and I I just I loved those little things that they threw in there because you know there was so much heart in this movie there was just so much heart but a fail I'd have to say is it was pretty fast paced the movie's only like an hour and a half long it is pretty short and it does kind of hold it back in ways sometimes I feel like it just needed to simmer a little bit you know let you know things soak up a little bit like Mario goes to the Mushroom Kingdom then he immediately he's not like exploring you know, the Mushroom Kingdom in there or anything. He, there's like a montage of him getting to the castle and then he meets Peach and then it just goes, everything moves very quickly in this movie, which, you know, I, I kind of frustrate me because I wanted, you know, I just wanted to like soak up this world and I felt like it was kind of going bing, 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 trying to go to one thing then the other. Um, but yeah, I, I, that was that was kind of one of my biggest complaints, I'd have to say. Next is the music and sound design. Well. Not all the music, but I'll get the, I'll get to that in a second. But the actual like the actual like soundtrack of this movie is phenomenal. We got the DK rap, which you know they didn't give credit to the original composer, but you know that's a whole nother point. Just all the little sound design things, like the GameCube startup being uh, Luigi's phone ringtone. Just there's like everything, like you heard little sound effects like come straight from the game over and over again throughout the movie, and it made it really feel like yes, this is the Mario movie. It's not like a Mario movie. It the sound design, the music, it it immersed you in this world and I think they did an absolute brilliant job with that. But as I was saying, the random pop songs just randomly throughout or the not really pop songs, but like, you know, specifically 80s rock, like it 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 felt very out of place in this movie. Take on me during the Donkey Kong karting scene, I thought was kind of odd. Um, then you had Thunderstruck come out of nowhere. It just, it, it felt extremely out of place in this movie, I've just gotta say. But going back to another win, let's talk about the voice acting. Again, I said a win, not a fail. Obviously, there are some better voice actors than others, but I honestly felt like they all did a, an amazing job. Um, specifically, I'd like to say Luigi with Charlie Day and uh, Jack Black with Bowser knocked their roles out of the park, especially Luigi. I love Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny, and I, I thought his voice like randomly fit perfectly with what like a Luigi character would be in a movie. So I think that was that was amazing. Um, Jack Black, I think, played this Bowser amazing. Everything from you know the 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 piano scene. The piano scene is one of the greatest scenes in the entire movie. Even though like it's kind of a little out of place, but it's also like you know they they were making a goofy Bowser. They were making you know like a Jack Black Bowser. So I was totally down for that. Um, but also a few voice acting that like didn't go well was like Mario and Cranky Kong. I think Chris Pratt he did perfectly fine. He's he 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 did the Chris Pratt voice, but you know, it it it, it, it once you got into the movie, you weren't really noticing it, so it was perfectly fine. But Cranky Kong, I don't know. Out of all of the characters in this movie, Cranky Kong was probably like the one that was just like I don't know. Whenever he talked, it didn't feel like Cranky talk. Cranky Kong was talking. It felt like you know somebody was like dubbing over Cranky Kong. Um, 
Maybe that was just me, but that was probably like the only person in the entire movie that was like it or not person uh, Kong or whatever moving on and I was talking about how much I love Charlie Day's Luigi and that makes this all more sad because Luigi doesn't honestly get too much screen time. And that's honestly because he's the damsel in distress. I understand why they wanted, you know, Peach not to be the damsel in distress. I'm honestly glad they did that because I loved seeing Anya Taylor-Joy kill her role as Peach. I thought the whole, you know, the trio of her, Mario, and Toad was brilliant. I was kind of hoping, by the way, just random thought that Toad would get promoted to like a captain at the end of the movie and be like Captain Toad. Maybe that was just me, but I, I thought that would have been like, you know, so funny. But um, no. Anyways, back to Luigi. He, he He's at the beginning and then he gets swept away into the, the Dark Lands. Or I forget what they called it. I don't know why they didn't call it like something actually Mario themed. I think that was like one of the only things that was like kind of out of place, but never mind. Luigi, for most of this, is just stuck in a cage, which kind of blows. But um, you get it. You get you get a, you get a lot of good Luigi. And Luigi definitely steals the show whenever he's on screen. So um, I think more Luigi definitely would have benefited this movie a hundred percent. Then next, this I'm, I'm going to talk quickly about this one, but just the animation, I it, like it, it definitely feels like Illumination animation. But I think that worked so well for the Mario movie. You know, I've always like kind of criticized Illumination's animation for being, you know, too basic, too, you know, cookie cutter, like all of their characters look the same in all their movies. And you definitely see that with the like outside world with like the, you know, the humans. But I think it very much benefits this movie because I feel like their style is just the Mario style. Like w once you're in in it with the Mushroom Kingdom and, you know, seeing all the toads running around and I felt like it, it it just it just worked and seeing like the, the item blocks and everybody hitting it and the coins it just it looked like a Mario game in a way obviously the faces were like a much more they they had lots more expression to them so it kind of felt weird at times seeing their face move around because you really don't see that in the the games or you know anything like that but um yeah I didn't really have a problem with that also just a side note I thought it was really cool that we got to see the Mario family. Um, M Mario, you know, he has a like, like lore now, I guess, outside of just Luigi. So that's kind of neat. Um, and also bring this also back to attention detail and Easter eggs. Him going into his room and playing on an NES. And I think that was Kid Icarus. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But um, just all those little things sprinkled throughout, just it, it makes this movie just like uh, every time you like, I bet every single time I go back and watch this, I'm just going to notice something I didn't notice before and just kind of like, it's so Nintendo. It's so Nintendo. Ah, OK, moving on. <laughs> the, um, this really isn't, you know, the movie's fault, but so much of the cool reveals were already revealed in the trailer. Things like, you know, Mario Kart, uh, the superstar the you know the 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 cool cool mountain penguins the uh uh i'm trying to think of another thing give me a second um the cool the cool um mario the cool mario bros commercial like all of that stuff was kind of it was already thrown in the trailers to where like going in i already knew what the plot was i knew luigi was the damsel in distress i knew that you know Mario is probably going to have to go on a side quest to, you know, the Donkey Kong Kingdom, which honestly, they called it the Jungle Kingdom, which gets me very excited for Mario Odyssey 2, where there's a Jungle Kingdom where, you know, the Kongs live. Um, oh, also, also another Easter egg. Pauline is the mayor of New York City. OK, that was neat. It's kind of sad they didn't make it New Donk City, Ed, but, you know, I guess they wanted to make it in the real world, so. Who knows? I, I, I it was a little disappointing that, you know, I went in knowing all these things, but it, it did kind of, you know, hinder those moments in the movie because it was like I, 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 I wasn't as excited as I probably would have been going in blind. But I think that's really the thing with all things. You just kind of need to shield yourself from those if you, you know, really care about that. But I think especially in this movie, the trailers definitely hindered, you know, the actual excitement coming from it. And my final win is just the absolute brilliant world building they did in this movie. This sets up so many more possibilities for new Nintendo movies coming down the line. Like I could definitely see a Luigi's Mansion movie, a Donkey Kong Country movie, like a Yoshi's Island movie, which, you know, we got we got Yoshi teased at the end of that. So it's probably going to be more like a like a Mario Bros 2 with Yoshi in it. Um, I'm curious how they do the voice acting on that one. They better not have Yoshi talk. It better just be, you know, like noises because that would freak me out if Yoshi started talking 
Um, but you know, the whole scene with Peach saying there's a whole universe of galaxies out there, like, oh my God, bro, you know, there's, you got, there, there, it's just, there's so much to this movie that isn't explored that I feel like is, it, it, this movie, this movie is already killing it at the box office, so you know we're gonna get a sequel. You know we're hopefully gonna get spinoffs. Um, so if they're able to, you know, make like their own Nintendo Cinematic Universe, that would be pretty neat. I would have to say. Um, yeah, I'd be super curious how all of that turns out. But you know, the world building it was just it was it was. It was perfect. Um, and then finally, not really a fail from the actual movie, like, but don't go, don't go at a time when you think a lot of kids will go there. Maybe this was just me. Um, this is maybe this is a random thing to bring up, but the entirety of the movie, there were kids screaming, there were kids yelling, there was kids crying. It was literally like I was at like you know. Like a, like a Chuck E. Cheese. It felt like it was at a Chuck E. Cheese the whole time. So it was kind of disappointing. If you don't want kids in your theater, go later in the day, go earlier in the day when they're at school. Or, you know, it's spring break where I'm at right now. So, you know, they're all out of school no matter what. But um, yeah, that was kind of a disappointing thing because like there, there's definitely parts of the movie where I was trying to listen and I couldn't because it was so loud in my theater. Yeah, that's really not a like a fail towards the movie, but you know, I had I I, only, I had to do five and five and I had nothing else to say bad about this movie because it's, it's honestly so good. But yeah, that's all I got to say um, for, you know, today's video. If you guys enjoyed, uh, please hit like and subscribe. And if you don't mind, leave a comment telling me what your favorite Easter egg you saw in the Mario movie was. Because mine personally has got to be Little Mac in the Punch-Out Pizzeria. Oh my God, that was so cool seeing Little Mac's like, you know, my name is Mac and you know, I love Punch-Out's probably my favorite Nintendo game of all time. So it is so cool seeing that. And I'm probably going to cut off at some random point in this whole thing. So, you know, I'm just going to ramble on for a little bit and then cut.